So in this video, I'm going to follow up on the theme of whether FPGAs can compete with GPUs and image processing. And this time, instead of looking at uh, micro benchmarks and small case studies where uh, people try to implement sliding window applications like uh, or sliding window operations like Gaussian kernels, I'm going to look at whole application case studies where people put uh, quite a bit of effort into implementing whole realistic applications on FPGAs and GPUs and reported on the results. So to start off, here's a pretty highly cited paper. And it was a, a comparison study on implementing optical flow and digital communications on FPGAs and GPUs. And it's a long paper, but basically the punchline is for two different optical flow algorithms, the GPU had better performance, while for a set of digital com MIMO computations, they had similar performance. <clears throat> In all cases, the FPGA implementations required 10x the development time. So basically here the authors found that GPUs are better for optical flow and you know maybe they're similar for opti for digital communications which I was kind of surprised by the latter because <coughs> you know FPGAs have huge market in things like uh, you know Wi-Fi base stations and things like that so uh, it was kind of surprising to see that uh, they had similar performance at least in that implementation and there actually, it was a long article, but that's pretty, that one line is basically the summary of it. Um, and then there was another one I looked at, a comparison of FPGA and GPU for real time, again, phase-based optical flow, stereo and local image features. So here it's all image processing applications. And they did a long analysis of things like, uh, you know, accuracy and so forth. But it all pretty much got summarized in this final table where they compare where the FPGA and the GPU were most suitable. They decided the FPGA was most suitable for the Gabor filter bank, local features, median filtering, arithmetically intense optical flow. That kind of shocked me because peak arithmetic intensity on an FPGA, even for fixed point operations, isn't that high compared to um, you know, the peak arithmetic intensity of a GPU for a floating point. Um, and then they said, you know, FPGA is better for power consumption. That's not really that surprising. Normalized speed, flexibility, embedded platforms, and certification capabilities, whereas the GPU is better for phases, image feature, image pyramid, warping, multi-frame optical flow, accuracy, no surprise there, right, because GPUs have better floating point performance, absolute speed, design time, high performance computing, and low cost. Um, so I think there is general agreement that, you know, GPUs are uh, easier to design for than FPGAs, but already there was some you know, disagreement where apparently uh, they believe that on optical flow, FPGAs could actually be better for some implementations. Uh, here's another one, comparison of FPGA and GPU implementations of real-time stereo vision. And once again, I'll just kind of reduce this paper to the punchline and people who want to read more can go on. Our experiments show that for a range of image sizes, the GPU manages two times 10 to the ninth disparities per second compared with 2.6 times 10 to the ninth disparities per second for an FPGA. So pretty close, but the FPGA uh, did better. Okay, and then real-time tone mapping on GPU and FPGA, and these authors found that, the, here again, the punchline, the proposed operator has been implemented on battery-operated platforms, one based on the NVIDIA G, or the GPU NVIDIA Ion 2 and another on the FPGA Spartan 3, which perform at 30 and 60 frames per second, respectively. So the in this case, the FPGA did a lot better on real-time tone mapping. And I was a little surprised with that because real-time tone mapping, you know, that's exactly the kind of thing that... Uh, you know, GPUs are optimized for, maybe not exactly, but it, you know, it's definitely the kind of thing that they have in mind. So I was kind of shocked that an FPGA platform would be twice as good as a GPU. And when I read the fine print of the paper, they mentioned, well, they have this table three, performance of GPU and FPGA implementations, which I think is where that punchline in the abstract came from, where the performance in uh, frames per second is four for the GPU, <coughs> or four for the CPU, 30 for the GPU, 60 for the FPGA. But then they said the FPGA performs at a major frame rate I think they meant to say a larger frame rate or higher frame rate than the GPU. This is mainly due to the large delay required to transfer the frame from the CPU memory to the GPU global memory and vice versa, 10 milliseconds. Nevertheless, further improvement can be achieved by performing the transfer, I think they meant to say transfers, between the CPU and GPU asynchronously concurrently with the computation. And I think that last sentence is pretty critical, right? If you have a very compute intense application that takes a long time to run, you know, you can overlap, you can double buffer the image in the GPU's memory and you can overlap um, the transfer of one image over to the GPU with computation of the, you know, the next or the previous image on the GPU. So I'm not sure how meaningful these results uh, really are. 
Another one, a quantitative cross-architecture study of morphological image processing on CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs. So full disclosure, I had never heard of morphological image processing. I had no idea uh, what that term meant. But from reading the paper, it looks like it's basically kind of stencil-ish computations where you're sliding a window over the image and doing some uh, computation on each window. Again, here's uh, you know, the critical table from that paper where they have a cross-architectural comparison of top hat implementations for different sizes of structuring element. And from what I read in the window or in the paper, the structuring element's basically the window. It's like the stencil size. So here's frames per second at different uh, sizes, three by three, seven by seven, and 15 by 15. And here's millijoules per frame at three by three, seven by seven, and 15 by 15. And what they've highlighted here is the Core i7 needs 34 millijoules per frame, the Tegra K1 30.3. The Tegra K1 is like a NVIDIA GPU SOC thing uh, that's fabricated in 28 nanometers. And then the Zinc, which is uh, 3.5 millijoules per frame. So they found that uh, the Zinc uses quite a bit less energy than uh, the GPU or the CPU. Um, and I was kind of surprised to have similar the millijoules per frame for the CPU and the GPU were. That's not as big of a difference as I would have imagined, but uh, who knows. So unlike the sort of sliding window case studies, I didn't actually see a ton of agreement, right? You have one paper saying, for example, that you know certain types of optical flow are better on an FPGA. You have another paper saying that two different optical flow algorithms, you know, the GPU is basically twice as good uh, or substantially better. Um, the one place where it seems like everybody agrees is that FPGAs take a lot more development effort. Um, it just takes a lot longer because you have to deal with things like placement and routing and managing the clock period and things that are just you know taken care of for you um, or don't exist at all, like place and route on uh, you know a CPU or a GPU. And I think one possible reason for that is just it's very hard to do an apples to apples comparison. Reading through those papers, you know, I kind of just quickly summarize them with little punchlines, but. There's a lot of discussion about you know the accuracy trade-offs of floating point versus fixed point, and if your fixed point implementation did terribly, is there actually a better fixed point implementation you didn't think of? It's kind of hard to rule that out or prove that uh, you know it couldn't be done better. And then of course, really nobody's interested in running specific programs. People are interested in running applications like you know optical flow or some larger image processing application that optical flow is a part of. Um, and deciding which implementation of an application to use uh, for each platform is another one where it's tough to prove that you've found sort of the optimal choice that best uh, utilizes one architecture's strengths and minimizes its weaknesses. So um, it's pretty hard to do an apples to apples comparison, but it does seem from reading those that, uh, you know, the performance benefits of an FPJ, at least on big image processing applications, require at least some precision loss by converting floating point into fixed point, and it's gonna take a lot more development time. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. I thought it was pretty interesting. And uh, in the next few videos, we'll talk about some of uh, my own benchmarks on comparing FPGAs and GPUs for image processing applications, and that should be fun too. So I'll see you in the next video.